All right, so how do I describe this? This is like my this is my first. This is not my first attempt at making a YouTube video. I guess it's my first attempt at making a proper YouTube video in the sense that this is me just talking and trying to get a conversation going. Uh, that's really what this will be about. Um, so, I guess, yeah, I'll split this into two parts. First part's going to be about, um, essentially, uh, this pattern that I've noticed, which is kind of obvious. It's the pattern... <laughs> it's the pattern of noticing uh, patterns about myself or stuff about myself. And I'm trying to really understand uh, kind of why that happens. And uh, I guess I should introduce myself um, if you haven't, if you don't know who I am. Uh, my name is Garrett House. Uh, that's on my channel description or my channel name or whatever it is. Um, and I'm interested in understanding why I do what I do, um, and that's kind of a difficult question to answer. Um, I've researched, um, different theories on that stuff from depth psychology to neuroscience, um, and it's kind of hard to, uh, find good answers, I guess, um. Neuroscience is good with mechanisms. For example, if you want to say, hey, how is somebody introspective? Or how is some, does somebody engage in self-reflection? Which brain regions are associated with self-reflection? You can say, oh, it's the cortical midline structures. Those ones are what are active when people are, or, you know, those ones are what are active when people are referencing themselves, trying to understand themselves, talking about their traits, whatever, however it works. That's the general overview of the neuroscientific uh, approach to cognitive neuroscientific approach to uh, understanding self reflection, which is good, but it doesn't really talk about like okay now why would somebody it doesn't answer the answer the differential psychology question it doesn't answer like okay why would somebody uh, given the choice or given the opportunity to do a number of different things why would they opt to uh, engage in this activity or not even opt but why would this yeah, so I guess why would they opt? Why would this become habitual? Why would they engage in this activity, generally speaking? It doesn't really answer the... It answers the how, it doesn't really answer the why. You can look at depth psychology, specifically, I guess, Jungian typology. And the interesting thing with that is that, like, at first glance, you'd probably say, oh, that's just introversion. Introspection, introversion, it's that simple. But if you look at how different people or different groups or different theories uh, approach it from a, uh, what was I going to say? How they approach it from the standpoint of cognitive functions. There isn't really, there's like, I can't think of anybody who really says like this cognitive function or this set of cognitive functions uh, produces introspection or causes introspection. Um, because from my perspective, uh, I would think that like it would be like an introverted perceiving function. That makes sense. You're perceiving, you're learning, you're not... I mean, maybe judging, depending on how you describe perceiving versus judging. It could be either one, but um, long story short, there's not a lot of good explanations as to why uh, somebody would either become or just be introspective. Um, or what purpose introspection serves in, um, from an evolutionary perspective. Uh, that's another thought I've had, is that why is it that humans can introspect, but like a squirrel can't introspect? As far as I can tell, maybe I'm wrong, but I can't see how a squirrel, how you can even introspect without some sort of language capacity. Uh, you can maybe introspect on your physical states, but your mental states, or like what, why you do what you do, why you think what you think, that seems a bit too high a level for a squirrel or a squid or another squa animal. I don't know. But yeah, I guess that's kind of what I'm 
making this video for is just to get other, like, just to see, like, are other people, are there other people out there who are disinterested in understanding themselves? Because even in the typology community, you'll, you'll find a mix of people. You'll find people who are interested in typology for understanding others, and you'll find, uh, you'll find people who are interested in understanding themselves. I fall into the category of people who are more interested in understanding themselves and understanding others. Uh, that's just something I've observed, as far as I can tell. It seems to be a pattern. You know, it's it's self-referential, self-reflective thoughts. Like, I'll have a thought and I'll think, why did I think that? Or, you know, what... I mean, that's the larger pattern. I'm going to make a second video of, like, a, a smaller pattern that's inside of that pattern. But the main thing I'm trying to understand is, like, what's the, why, why am I like this? <laughs> it's really meta, actually, because, like, why am I the type of person who asks, why am I like this? Why am I like the way that, why am I, it, I guess you get it. Um, it's what I'm trying to understand. It's what I'm trying to uh, figure out. And it's really, I guess the point is really just to see, like, just to get some perspective on it, like, am I the, like, how many, how common is this? Because I don't really think it makes a lot of sense to say that, like, um, I'm the only person, uh, who's actually disintrospective, or introspective at all, for that matter. But I can't find examples, I can't find any books of people talking about, like, yeah, I went through this really introspective period, I got out of it, or... Or I'm really introspective and I found out all this stuff about myself and now I apply it in this way. Like, I can't find other examples of this behavior. And that shouldn't be the case. Because I'm a human. I'm a person. Other, I'm, I'm not like... Even if... Not even... This might be a... Uh, some sort of disorder or some sort of weird issue that I have. Even so, it shouldn't be exclusive to me because I'm still a human. I guess the only way it could be specific to me is if I have a mutation or something that nobody else has, and that's what's making this. And even that's unlikely. Um, so I guess I'm hedging my bets on the side of, like, yeah, other people experience this stuff, but I just haven't found them yet, so I'm making this video to kind of start a conversation around self-reflection, introspection, uh, self-discovery, pursuit for self-knowledge, pursuit of self-knowledge, and where that comes from and why do you guys think it happens? Because um, I don't have any ideas. Well, I guess I have I have some ideas. Um, I've got like... Like I said, I mean, I know... Like, you can look at the neuroscience for, and they can and there's a few papers that I came across that were just saying, Hey, cortical midline structures, that's where, that's where it happens. That's, that's how it happens, I guess. Well, that's what's so. I mean, causation with neuroscience, it's like it's the brain region that's associated with this type of conscious activity. Maybe it's a neurocorrelative consciousness type thing. I didn't look at the papers that in depth. But, I don't know, that's what I, that's what I gathered. Um, what else? Other theories, other explanations. That's not really an explanation, as I said before. It's just like a correlation. And I've primarily investigated typology because it seems like that's the only, like Enneagram stuff, Myers-Briggs, Socionics, all, this, all the typologies, all the stuff. Um, they're the only ones that are really trying to, I guess I can go through each of the theories and just say, like, okay, here's where the, these guys come close. And, yeah, because nobody really has a, Good enough answer as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I can start with personality junkie. Personality junkie, they would say, well, you know, you're interested in not really necessarily inner content, but the self, the subject, as opposed to the object, right? They'd say, that's introversion. I'd say, okay, introversion, all right? But in your theory, introversion is actually is just like having an introverted function first, right? So I'm like, okay, which one of these introverted functions is causing the introspection or the self-discovery, the self-knowledge, the self-referential, self-reflective thinking, self-reflection? And 
Um, like you can go through all the, you can go through the two judging functions, two perceiving functions. Uh, you can go through all of them, and none of the descriptions actually account for this behavior. And I don't think it's incorrect to expect um, a sufficient theory to account for this behavior because that's what I'm observing. And I guess the argument might be that, well, you need to... Like, behavior is like a consequence of cognition, which is what the cognitive functions are actually trying to describe. Uh, well, I guess that doesn't even make sense, because the behavior that I'm talking about is um, a... I, I consider a thought to be a type of behavior, essentially, or I, can, I consider a thought to be like a... Well, I can move this around, I can rotate a picture in my head, I can think, I can talk. It's all behavior as far as I'm concerned. Um, so, what I mean by cognition... Well, I actually thought of a third thing to make a video about. <laughs> if I do start doing YouTube videos more consistently, then they're all just going to be essentially like, hey, what's going on here? Because I don't know. Because that's my nominal state. Is I don't know, and I'm trying to figure it out. Um, but yeah, I just thought of something else to make a video about after this, after the second one. But yeah, so essentially personality junkie would say, well... You're just an introvert, and that's what this is. But if you look at the introverted functions, and you see, okay, which one of these is the actual mechanism behind this process I'm experiencing, you can't really find it. So, that's personality junkie. They do that. Because uh, a lot of, you know, the other Jungian typology systems don't really account for it. Uh, so it's not every theory you come across is going to explain it. Um, there's this group, or this page, or this these two people, a little bit of personality, Albop. Um, they consider the X-ray perceiving functions to be concerned with the individual scope, and they'll say that like if you're uh, focused on yourself or are focused on other or single individuals, that's because you're an EP primarily. If you're primarily focused on understanding yourself, understanding other other individuals, it's because you're an EP. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, I mean, because, and then they say, and they break it down to SE and NE, and, um, break it down to SE and NE, and, uh, which is like, are you forming a physical model or a mental model? That's one way they describe it. I'm forming a mental model. I'm not, uh, I mean, it's a conceptual model of, I'm trying to, understand not like how does my body work I don't even understand really what SE would be in that sense but um, oddly enough they have me typed as an ESTP um, it's just good with the EP part but it's hard to see myself first off can I mean I don't need to go get too into it you know get too into it um, but yeah that's where um, Al Bop would or a little bit of personality. They need to come up with a better acronym or a shorter name for their theory. They don't need to, but it would make it easier to say. Um, that's where they have me. They would have me pegged as like, oh, that's your e penis. That didn't come out right, but we're gonna pretend that it came out fine. Your EP quality, I guess. Um, that's what they would say. This that's that's how they would explain this introspection, this self discovery. Because like, they even say like you're going to be primarily concerned with understanding individuals, but you're going to start off with un trying to understand yourself, which makes sense, I guess. Um, and I guess as to where that kind of starts to fall apart, I guess it falls apart not in that one sense, but it falls apart because it doesn't explain other behaviors. So it actually does. Albop does explain that pretty consistently well like there's no like problem with like trying to make everything line up with that but the thing I'm gonna make a video on next is where I think they kind of are unable to account for that behavior or that pattern of thought or behavior thought I guess thought behavior like I said I consider them kind of uh, not one of the same but I consider thought to be a subclass of behavior 
So that's Personality Junkie, Al Bop. This one go over to Socionics, and this isn't like mainstream Socionics, but this is more. I guess I can go into two different Socionics, uh, two different Socionics schools. Sure, schools. Um, first is just like I guess old school Socionics in terms of the stuff that Augusta originally wrote. Uh, In her, in this writing, I found that she was talking about the marine dichotomies with. Um, she describes your super id block, essentially, as a... Uh, this is getting kind of deep. I don't know if anybody's going to be... I'll probably just make the video regardless, but I don't know if people are going to be able to follow it this well. Because um, I'm going pretty deep into these different theories. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, your super id block, which is just like a... Like in socionics, you have all eight functions and they're arranged in blocks. And depending on which functions are where, are going to determine how you use each of these blocks. Your ego's at the top. Super ego, super id, id. That's how they conceptualize things. One of these writings I was looking at she was describing the super as, this, as concerned with understanding or receiving signals from the organism itself as opposed to its environment. The way it's described is the superego says how the environment should be. Um, superego, yes, superego explains how the environment is. Super id explains how the organism is. Id explains how the organism should be. Um, I don't know really how that connects with valued subdued, strong, weak, um, it's kind of tricky. Uh, it's not really, I mean, I, that's, because the weird thing with that is that any modern socionics thing you look at with Model A isn't talking about it like that at this point. And I don't know if her views change and that's what got passed on or people change what was already written, but I don't know. Um, but essentially, I mean, but that does account for this behavior. Like, especially if it's just like, if the valued, subdued dichotomies actually play into that as well. If you're looking at my super id block, then you can say, well, you know, you're just valued. You have this valued block of self-understanding that you're filling with like, I don't know, maybe NETI or something like that with the categor abstract categorization. Something to that effect. Um... Yeah. And so that wouldn't really explain why, like, I'm in that, why I'm in that mental space where I, sh where I should be more in my ego. Maybe if you can switch, and it's kind of like the C.S. Joseph stuff with different sides of your mind, maybe that's going on uh, with um, the superego id, super id and ego. Um, but that's another possible explanation. Next one's a bit simpler. Uh, dynamic socionics. These are the guys who did the study that's on Wikisocion with the 11 brain and dichotomies where they typed people and, and just extracted data from their behaviors. Um, they would say that... Um, they would say that... It's just like introversion is just kind of you're interested in yourself more than... Uh, so it's a different definition because it's not about relationships and objects. They're saying you're more like introvert is more interested in themselves or more interested in introspection or, or internal content than external content or external data. So that kind of works. Um, but like I said, some of that stuff falls apart. The, the thing that I am noticing is that none of the theories can account for like all the stuff that I'm noticing with myself. Um, which is not to say that they're like bad theories. I'm just saying that they're not complete, obviously, I guess. It's weird. It's weird. Um, more self-reflection, but physical. Um, yeah, they're none of them really account for the whole. Can really explain all these different patterns, and these aren't like small patterns. These are things that like like the introspection bit, the self-reflective bit that takes up a lot of my time. Um, so. It's not insignificant. I'm not like, I don't think I'm diving too deep into the minutiae. I'm not like 
man, why am I right-handed? Or why do I sit like this? Or why do I cross my arms? You know, I don't, it's not like there are like persistent patterns in thought and behavior that, you know, I'm noticing in myself that aren't really explained. Um, so that, what have I done so far? I've done personality junkie, a little bit of personality, two different socionics theories. I think that might be it. I didn't come up with a list or I didn't uh, plan this out really. Um, I don't, I don't want to spend too much time just trying to think about like, did I forget something or not? Because I'll spend like like a minute thinking about that and that would just be a minute of silence and that would be boring. But yeah, I think that might be it um, in terms of the, the different theories that account for this behavior. Um, but as I'll communicate, well, yeah, all of them don't really count for it as well as I'd like them to, I suppose. I think that might be it. Let's see how long this thing's running. 20 minutes. I could make it 30 minutes. I don't know. 20 minutes is kind of, I don't know how long people's attention spans are for this type of stuff. But I guess the main takeaway is I'm just trying to see if other people, like, do you experience this behavior? And if so, like, what, how have you explained it or dealt with it or understood it or whatever? Um, that's the main takeaway. I've also explained, I guess, the different um, explanations I've come across and mechanisms I've come across, explanations in typology, mechanisms in neuroscience. I didn't spend that much time on cortical midline structures because I don't know much about cortical midline structures. I mean, it's just a name that kept on popping up when you search like self-referential, self-reflection in neuroscience. I mean, you can look it up. It'll just... It'll be the same. It'll be a lot of the same stuff in terms of cortical midline structures, whatever that means. Um, yeah, so I guess that's about it. Um, I'm just making these videos to try to... I have no idea what I'm going to title this. Um, because I'm aware that I go a bit into typology, pretty deep into typology, so I want to make sure that like people aren't finding this and being like, wait, what? And then just confused. Um, so I guess I'll probably title it something typology related, but also related to typology of introspection, typology of self-reflection. Yeah. Jungian typology of self-reflection. A discussion. Something like that. Uh, but yeah, that's what I'll do, and I'm going to make a few more videos about different other different patterns I've noticed with myself and other explanations I've come across, and yeah, I'll go from there. All right. Thank you for listening. Have a good day.